we sent out a survey to kind of get some ideas of some real-time uh, information on what you guys were dealing with. So thank you for those of you that did do the survey. If you didn't get the survey, don't feel bad. It didn't, it didn't, we didn't have a chance to, for it to reach out to everyone, but that data was very, very helpful. What that showed us was among, um, among our ALA group, we had about 61% um, of people that you know, really don't have uh, much of a plan with regard to succession planning, so that's exactly why, why we're here. One thing that I really want to mention, and I tried to really think of this in terms of law firm, how do we make this work in our law firms? Um, and, and I don't, you guys may, some of you may have experience with this, but how do we incorporate, uh, once we establish our succession plan, how do we incorporate it into our billing system so that we can actually track it and follow it? And so let's just say um, we sit down, we set up our plan, we, um, we sit down and we communicate the plan, we've got a formal plan, and then we need to track it. It can't just be like at the origination, one and done. This needs to be something that you follow, so you should be able to, just like your pro bono work, right? You can print out a report and kind of track and see how that's going. You know what? With the, um, if, you, if you've established some specific objectives with regard to the integration of Harvey's practice with Mike, Make sure they're, you know, look at their, sit down and review with them. Make sure they're going to lunch. Make sure they're transitioning because, you know, at the end of the day, the truth is, it's all about the client. If, if Mike doesn't develop that trust relationship with the clients, there's no guarantee that that business is going to stay with the firm. So, you know, it really takes kind of some strategy and some global thinking um, to really make this successful. But then, you know, for sure, you know, just improving the retention again, just drank, dangling that carrots. Who has an example they would like to share? You know what, if you have one or two people, you know, if you're fortunate enough to have one or two people that might be, you might be able to queue up to be your successor, you can start that now. Um, but yeah, just really formulating those plans and making sure that things, the processes and procedures are, are documented. And that's if it's, that's if it's planned. But having those process and procedures in place for that hit by the bus, you know, there's never going to be, it's never going to be a seamless transition when that happens. It's, it's an emergency, it's, it's critical, but at least if you have some things kind of formulated and, and stuck in a drawer somewhere, you're not looking at your managing partner like, oh my gosh, what are we going to do? Are you saying that individuals should be identifying their own successors and then there should be a succession leadership team that vets those choices? Like what's the structure there with the succession leadership team? Well, what's their function? Yeah, and I guess I would say I don't I don't know that there's any like um, one solid answer to that question. That's a great question, but I really believe that it's so dependent on the organization. So just even being able to kind of understand some some of the dynamics and evaluate like what what your needs are, and then strategically create your teams. And and again. Um, it, Getting some cross engagement in ways that make sense is brilliant because you know, we don't want to try to force a square peg into a round hole. If these guys are not going to want to do this, if we don't have their buy-in and their engagement, it is going to be so difficult. And so, what can we do to get them engaged in the process and get them excited about this? You know.